I am very pleased to announce the forthcoming publication of my audiobook, Existentialism, professionally narrated by Clive Johnson. The purpose of this work is to answer one simple but profound question. Do we choose our values, or do our values choose us? Please enjoy the following promotional excerpt from the audiobook itself. Existentialism, an attitude, not a doctrine. The traditional view is that, when a person comes into the world, there are various standards to which he must conform and various values that he must uphold. No sooner does a person acquire the ability to speak than the weight of centuries of tradition bears down on him, forcing him to do things he doesn't want to do and live in a way he doesn't want to live. Existentialism says, to hell with all these pre-existing values. Existentialism is thus an injunction that we choose our own values and, more generally, chart our own course. At its core, existentialism is therefore less of a doctrine than it is an attitude. A doctrine is a system of interconnected propositions. Quantum physics is a doctrine. So are Freudian psychology, Keynesian economics, and Russell's theory of descriptions. The viability of a doctrine has nothing to do with how anyone feels about anything. Doctrines are right or wrong. They are to be judged according to how well they measure up to the relevant logical or empirical benchmarks. Opinions and feelings have nothing to do with it. Attitudes cannot be understood in these terms. If you tell me that you like being at the beach, or that you hate picnics, I cannot say, you're wrong, or you're right. By contrast, if you tell me that you think that the US economy would improve if a Marxist government were to take over, I can say, you're wrong, or you're right. So to the extent that it is an attitude, existentialism cannot be judged to be wrong. My own view is that, taken as an attitude, there is much to be said for existentialism. If you come into the world believing that values are to be chosen, as opposed to passively accepted, you are probably more likely than you would otherwise be to reflect on what your values should be, and also, consequently, on what the merits or demerits are of traditionally accepted values. And such reflectiveness is positive in two ways. First, if you choose your values instead of simply accepting the values of others, you are, all other things being equal, more likely to live according to values that work for you psychologically. Second, even if you choose the wrong values, the mere fact that you chose your values instead of passively and robotically accepting the values of others would seem to be an affirmation of your rationality and freedom and, therefore, of your humanness. Section 1.1. Don't believe the hype. The message of existentialism. There is actually a third reason why it is better to choose one's values than to accept the values of others. A number of values seem to involve a diminishment of self. Be a team player. Don't do what you want. Work for the family business. Don't do what you want. Take care of your ailing mother. Don't do what you want. Believe what you're told to believe in. Don't have your own beliefs. You're not qualified. You're not smart enough. You don't have the right educational background. And it's not your place to have your own views, even if you are qualified. Who do you think you are? It would not be hard to think of a case where flourishing and following conventional values fail to coalesce. So-and-so wants to be a writer. Supposedly wanting him to have a respectable life, so-and-so's parents, or teachers, or priest, tell him to take the safe path. Be a lawyer. Sell insurance. So-and-so becomes Tolstoy, or Shakespeare, or whoever. Had so-and-so followed the conventional path, so-and-so would have lived a life of quiet desperation, to use Theroux's expression. Indeed, Theroux used that very expression to make a point not unlike ours. And Theroux is sometimes seen as one of the first existentialists. Why do traditional values so often demand a reduction of the self? One possible answer is that the values that are endorsed by society are those that are good for society, and therefore aren't necessarily those that are good for the individual. As Freud emphasised in Civilization and its Discontents, society is possible only if the aspirations of individuals are abridged. 
A precondition for civilization is the abridgment of human freedoms and, consequently, of gratifications.